This is Brent with Likens Motorsports, and uh, for the past few weeks, I have been telling you guys about a surprise build and some surprise parts coming in. And uh, we were stalled for a few weeks because of COVID. Uh, not me, but uh, my customer's um, uh, employee that was sending out the heads to me. Um, but those finally came in yesterday. And um, I'm very excited uh, because I've never seen these in person before. So if you're looking at me or if you're looking at the video and you're thinking, well, that's just a regular small block Ford head. What's, uh, what's so different about that? Well, these are 302 tunnel port heads. And uh, I would welcome you to do a little bit of reading um, and maybe some Google searches, but uh, these are uh, 1968 C8, uh, it's like FE part number. And um, these uh, were... Um, designed and uh, tried out for some SCCA Trans Am cars on a 302 Ford. And there were two versions of this head that were offered. Uh, one was a race head, which used, um, I think, more of a modified, like a Boss 302 block that would oil um, up through the deck like an FE does to oil shaft mounted rocker arms. And then you had the street version, which uses or can use a traditional block and stud mounted rockers. So these are the street versions. And um, they came to me um, with a pair of valves so that I could uh, do some valve measuring and some volume checking. Um, and I think, um, I'll measure these here a second on camera, but, uh, these are, um, I think under two inch intake valves and either one five, five or one six exhaust. I can't remember, but I'll, I'll get those measurements here in a second. Uh, they are a little bit longer than typical small block Ford valves. These are around five, 200 in length. But um, they were not very popular, and um, what happened was you have, and this happens with even engines today, you have a huge, so here's my hand for reference, um, you have a huge intake port. Um, air fuel charge coming in has momentum like anything else does, and this is a huge volume, okay? And uh, it takes a lot of um, pulling on this intake port to get this huge volume of, of air and fuel mixture to move. And what happened was the RPMs that they were seeing in order to make these heads work was, uh, I've read somewhere uh, north of 9,000 RPM. So, you know, you get the heads to work up there and then the back, the bottom ends uh, in the late 60s just wouldn't hold that kind of abuse for long. So the heads were quickly phased out and um, the Boss uh, 302 style uh, engine family became commonplace in Trans Am racing with, with the Fords. So uh, this is a build that I have coming up. And I'll go ahead and tell you a little bit about the build. Um, it's going to be based on a world block, world products, short deck. Um, it's going to be 370 cubic inches. Okay, so we're adding roughly 68 cubic inches to um, the displacement compared to what they were using in 1968. Um, the bottom end will be, uh, I ordered a, a fully custom billet crankshaft from Bryant. We are using Dyer's rods and uh, we'll probably be using some Racetech pistons since my buddy Randy Gillis there 
um, has actually ran these heads before, and um, Randy goes way back in Ford racing, and he was um, um, a pretty uh, high up sales guy at JE, and now he works for Race Tech. So he has uh, chamber models and and everything that we will need to make pistons for for this engine. So this is going to go in a road race um, um, engine setup, and it will be dry sump. And um, we're gonna have lots of high-end goodies in in this engine. So definitely stay tuned um, and to stay abreast of this. Um, the crank is probably four months out, um, and the rods have a lead time as well. And um, it, all, for all intents and purposes, for 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 the time being, for this video, um, I'm gonna talk about the cylinder heads and what we plan to do to those. Um, here in just a second, I'm going to um, try to lap these valves in just so I can get a good seat contact between them. And I'll get some checking springs on those and then I can uh, pour a combustion chamber because I'm, there's, there's just not a lot of specs on these heads floating around on the internet. So I'm really curious to see what the chamber volume is. And then I'm going to pour an intake volume as well. Um, cause I want to see what I'm working with as far as, you know, the four barrel Cleveland heads were, you know, roughly 250, 260 cc's. And, um, uh, you know, I think this is a little bit bigger than that. So I want to see what we're working with. Um, I've talked to my head porter and, um, he's going to work these up for me. And since they are tunnel ports, what we will end up doing is treat these just like I do the tunnel port FEs. So we will raise the floor and fill that in to reduce the cross-sectional area. Um, and that will uh, gain flow and also help with the velocity and to get that huge port volume down. So between the port volume change and a very big change in displacement, uh, we're gonna make these cylinder heads work. For right now, um, the plan for these after I get some preliminary measurements is uh, we're going to get those these steel braided cleaned up uh, baked and tumbled so they look new and we're going to get some uh, seven millimeter bronze valve guides installed in these and then I'm going to send these to my head porter uh, he's going to uh, measure up what uh, just the throat size and um, here's a chamber view but he'll measure up the throat size and what valve sizes he thinks he will need and we will get some custom uh, victory titanium valves for these heads so it's going to be a cool pro project pretty curious to see what this chamber measures but uh, i guess we'll find out here in just a second so what i'm going to do um besides clean my hands i'm going to see if i can get a good seal on these valves and we will pour a chamber all right, our first snag is, this is a bent valve. Really bent. Like, I can't make it seat for nothing. So, I do have some off the shelf uh, 1.5, and I'm hoping that I can get these to seal up enough to get what I'm, get done what I need to get done. Well, I think I did get it to seal up a little bit. Chamber volume was 56.6. And, um, you know, that, that will change with different valves. But I wanted to get an idea of, you know, an, kind of a ballpark of where we would be. You know, I didn't know if these were, you know, 60cc chambers or 80 or what. So now I have a pretty good idea of um, of the chamber volume. And I can use that to see kind of what kind of ballpark I'll need to be in it, on my piston selection, if I'll need a flat top or uh, hopefully a little bit of a dish. But um, I've got some checking springs and everything on my valves to seal up the chamber. And I'm gonna do my very best to pour um, this intake port. So you do this just like you would do a chamber. Um, I put a pretty heavy amount of grease around the port, but I've got my plate and my orifice and um, I'll cant this head a little bit so that this is kind of raised up a little bit so any air will want to come out that hole. And um, I'll fill my 
um, pipe it, my burette, and uh, hopefully, um, I, I mean, I know for a fact it's going to take, I've got a 100cc burette, so it's going to take, um, I'm expecting about two and a half of those, so we will see. Well, you wouldn't believe this. I'm at 209.4 cc's. I mean, if you were to look down this port, you would think this thing is big enough to park a Cadillac in. But uh, 200, I mean, essentially 210 cc's. And uh, I was lucky enough that I'm not getting any leakage. Uh, this is left over from where I poured the chamber, but there's nothing leaking out of the valve. And um, we're not we're not losing anything. I've got fluid right up to the top of my plate. So, two hundred nine cc's. Um. Well, that's information, and that's good information. So I think what would have to happen is um, probably some shape reshaping of this port. Um, because, you know, a, a 210, if you were to build a 370 cubic inch Cleveland or Windsor, uh, today, you know, you would probably reach for a 225 cc head. So we're not out of bounds on, on our port volume, but it, it probably has something to do with, with either the shape, um, or maybe this, uh, push rod tube is, is pretty thick so I don't know but my uh, my head porter will be able to tell me 570 well probably it says 564 so 5625 is uh, 916 so that's a big big tube there but that's good because it means you can get a good size push rod in there um, so that's where we are 200 in Roughly 10 cc's. Um, I, I'm just, I mean, I usually don't get excited about stuff. I'm pretty even keel, um, but I'm, I'm pretty jazzed up about this. And um, I'm really jazzed up to see, you know, how this old stuff will run on, on a modern bottom end with some modern internals and some modern head work and valve work and all that stuff. So we will see, but, uh, here's where, here's where we are. And, um, I'm going to get these dropped off this week and have those, um, uh, still abraded and, uh, we'll get some guides ordered up, but, um, we are, we are starting, already have the block crank is ordered. Rods are ordered. Um, we are well, underway to, to starting this project so you will for sure want to stay tuned for this one um i've got a whole lot of small block ford builds going on right now they they came to, they seem to come in uh shifts like i'll get 10 or 12 fe's in a row and then here come the small box but um i've got some cool stuff on the way so if you're wanting to see what happens with this 302 tunnel port head from 1968 then you better be uh, ringing that bell hit that subscribe button all right guys i'm going to try to get this video posted up i normally don't post on wednesdays but uh, this is too cool to to um, pass up for now so i'm going to try to get this done all right guys you have a good week and i may have something for you towards the end of the week have a good day